Welcome to Earth Juice, I'm Sam. Coming up this week, lasers and crickets, snails hitching a lift, and lamprey sex. Earlier this week, I visited a small dark room deep in the depths of Bristol University in the UK to investigate some currently unpublished research going on with lasers and crickets. Natasha, thanks very much for having me. Now we've got lasers, we've got crickets. You might be forgiven for thinking they're fairly unusual bedfellows. What's going on here? So what we've got over here is a tree cricket. And what we're trying to understand is both how the singing works and how the hearing works. What you have over here is a laser Doppler vibrometer. Right. Roughly the way it works is the same as a speed gun that policemen use. Okay. They use a radio wave that they bounce off an object. The returning echo, in that case of the wave, tells them how fast that object was moving. It works with what we call the Doppler effect. This does the same thing, but with light. It allows you to see much, much, much smaller changes in speed. So you're using a laser to hear? which is unusual. <laughs> yes. And what's it told you about these crickets in particular? Then? One of the cool things that we were able to find is how fast they move when they're singing. One of the wings while they're singing is going at one meter per second. Wow, amazing. And am I right in thinking these type of crickets have actually sort of shown some kind of tool use? Yes, the tool they use is called a baffle. When they produce a sound using their wings, which move back and forth, on either side of the wing, the pressure is exactly opposite in phase. So it's high pressure sound here and low pressure over here. Right. And at the edges of the wings, the two pressures meet and they cancel each other out. What that does is it creates a phenomenon called acoustic short circuiting. So what these clever little crickets do is they sit in a hole in a leaf. And what that effectively does is makes their wings longer than they are. So the sound doesn't actually meet each other until the edge of the leaf. Right. So there's a lot less acoustic short circuiting and they are much louder than they would be without it. Oh, that's so clever. It's amazing, especially because this is exactly what acoustic engineers do with speakers. And have you found out anything else with this laser? Oh yeah, one of the things that the laser allows us to do as well is to visualise sound. So wow. for instance, we can put a speaker here and as the sound wave passes the cricket, we can visualise the sound and then see how the ear is responding to the sound that's passing over it. We've got some very acute females. They have this strange uh, mechanism, it's called active amplification, in which cells in their ear actually put energy back into the system so they can tune into certain sounds. Nice, so they can sort of zone out on things they don't want to hear. They want to hear. The nice thing about having cells doing this, and it don't, this is the first time it's been discovered, is that you can switch this on and off. Probably something I imagine most females would like to do. Just <laughs> so what's up next then, Natasha? We're going to be looking into what controls the ears switching on and off. Oh, all sounds really exciting. We'll be keeping our ear to the ground to hear how that goes. <laughs> but thanks so much for having us here today. You're welcome. Publishing their work in the journal PLOS One, researchers have revealed that snails may have a link to European human migration. Biologists have long debated why Ireland is home to flora and fauna that's genetically different to other species found throughout Europe. But scientists from the University of Nottingham in the UK have found that a common garden snail, Sapea nemoralis, which has been in Ireland for the last 8,000 years, is almost genetically identical to another found in the Pyrenees region of France. With previous evidence that these gastropods were part of French Stone Age human diet, researchers added that it's quite difficult to explain how these snails migrated without the use of these early humans. With rivers and oceans being the roads of the past, these snails may be the ancestors of individuals that travelled with humans as they went from the south of France to Ireland thousands of years ago, as scientists believe that anything that can't swim or fly in Ireland may have come there by boat. And to see our soon-to-be-released Guinness World Record attempt featuring 200 snails and Maddie's face, don't forget to subscribe. And finally, researchers examining sea lampreys have revealed that these vampires of the deep heat up for sex. A parasitic eel-like fish from the North Atlantic, lampreys don't have a conventional mouth. Instead, they have a circular opening filled with teeth and a razor-sharp tongue that they use to suck blood and bodily fluids from their victims. But it's not just their feeding technique that interests biologists. New research published in the Journal of Experimental Biology has revealed that a raised bump along the male's back, known as rope tissue, heats up in the presence of ovulating females. During courtship dances in fresh water, males release a pheromone to attract the females. They then rub this bump against them, resulting in both animals releasing sex cells, which then fuse together to develop into larvae in a watery nest. Under closer examination, the scientists noted that this raised bump or rope tissue looked very similar to a body fat known as brown adipose tissue, which some animals and newborns use to generate heat if they can't shiver. Professor Weeming Lee from the University of Michigan suggested that after attracting females to their nest using pheromones, males could be using this heated tissue to encourage the females to spawn. 
That's this week's juice. For more information on any of the stories, check out the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. There's oh, one nibbling no. my neck. But before we get on with the record, first of all, let's meet the most important guys in this attempt, the snails themselves.